What is up, guys? It is Tuesday, August 25th. Welcome to Adam Fitness with Coach A, the YouTube channel with me, Coach A, where I try and deliver to you guys in gym quality coaching and workouts for you to perform at home or in your garage gym. Uh, today's work is going to be mostly lower body oriented. All right, uh, got a lot of upper body working yesterday, so let's switch it up, mix it, and go with the lower. So, two pieces today. We have a strength slash skill piece, depending on how you're going to perform it, and we have a workout piece. Uh, the first part is going to take a little bit of explanation, so bear with me for a moment, and then we'll head out to the garage and demonstrate. Uh, we're looking at pistols. Now, if you're somebody that can do pistols, if you're somebody that has a hard time and still working on pistols, it's going to be two different things. So first, I want to go to the somebody that can do pistols. Uh, we're going to do four rounds. You're going to do either five each, 10 each, or 15 each reps, and then you're going to have a minute rest. The goal is attempting to accumulate a decent capacity work on the pistol uh, in a short period of time, uh, or I don't want to say as short as possible, but not a, a significant amount of rest. So that fatigue builds and you guys are forced to dig down a little deeper as you go through those four rounds. Uh, if you just got pistols, not great, but we can do them, then definitely five reps each side, so that's gonna be 10, four rounds of 10. Uh, you can alternate, you can do them all, it doesn't matter to me as long as you're getting the work in. Uh, if you're somebody that's been doing them for years, then let's you know challenge ourselves a little bit more. Obviously 15 each leg is gonna be 30 times four, that's 120 pistols. If you can handle that, awesome. If you can't handle that, don't do it. I would rather you guys do four consistent rounds sticking to the one minute rest, which means those sets need to be like a straight through kind of set. Um, if you want to think of this as a competitive environment, that's fine. As in you're pushing yourself, you're almost doing the rounds for time, if you will. You're trying to maintain that time and quality of movement. That works. Now, if you're somebody that's still trying to progress on your pistols, let's say maybe you took them as the April challenge, um, made a lot of gains, but we still have work to do, or if you're just somebody that's always been working on what have you, then I want you to spend 10 minutes practicing. Uh, if you want, you can do a little mini piece at the end, maybe eight, six to eight minutes of good work, and then the last four to two minutes are you trying to do sets at whatever you were able to work up to difficulty-wise. Um, remember, we have two issues when it comes to doing pistols. We have the flexibility or mobility in position, and we have the strength. If the issue is the strength, it's super simple. All we do is scale the range of motion. We don't squat as far, all right? Put something under your butt, uh, squat to it, squat with it, work through it from there. If the issue is flexibility, range of motion, specifically mobility and movement, uh, then this 10 minutes of practice can look a little bit more like a strength slash mobility session where you're trying to work the movement to the extent you can range of motion wise. And then you step off to the side, you do some ankle stretches, do some hip stretches if that's the case, maybe work some glute movements, exercises, some clamshells or something if the knees are diving in on you, core work, whatever, and then we go back to it. All right, we're gonna have some narrow stance squats, some ankle stretches in the warm up which I'm gonna demonstrate in a minute. So if you guys wanna utilize those as you go through, that's fine. Um, but again, goal, whenever we have a skill that you're not that good at, you don't have high comprehension over yet, the goal is to be better at whatever the end, so in this case, 10 minutes, than you were before, or at the very least, to have more confidence going forward than you did previously, all right? Now, the workout. It's going to be a 20 minute alternating imam. We have three movements, which means there is one rest minute each round. So we're looking at five rounds, okay? Four minute pieces, five rounds. The first one is going to be 10 squat jumps. No weight on this. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate this in a second. I say no weight, but if you want to add weight uh, because you're not somebody that can jump super high and you feel like your waist, you're not really getting much out of it not jumping high, then that's fine. But it's not a lot. It's just going to be dumbbells or something sitting at our side um, or maybe even held in front of the chest. But I want you to be able to land properly. That's the big thing here is we don't want to make the landing awkward because then you're going to tweak something. You're not going to land aggressively. You're going to end up with an injury or something along those lines. 
So it's going to be 10 squat jumps. The second one is going to be 15 goblet squats, ideally with a kettlebell, whatever we can hold in front. And then the third one is going to be a 200 meter run. Now you might be saying, I don't know if I can finish that in a minute. Well, you have a minute rest coming after it. So the goal is to get it done in that minute, even if you need to push. You do have the buffer of the rest, so if it takes you a minute and 10 seconds to finish that 200 meter run, you still have 50 seconds to rest before you go back into the squat jumps. All right, stick around and I will head outside and walk through this with you guys. All right guys, so I'm demoing the warm up stuff inside so it's a little easier for you guys to see and hear up close. So the lizard ankle stretch is going to be in a lizard position. Normally we would drag this knee and hip out, try to open up for a squat. Today we're going to push down and forward on the knee while still trying to keep that heel down on the ground. If I can, trying to get the knee out in front of the toes, then I can work in and out a little bit once it starts to loosen up. And that's going to be the ankle opener for the epistles today. Um, from there, you're going to see narrowing stance squats, meaning I'm gonna warm up my normal air squat, and then I'm going to start working my feet closer and closer together with the goal of still keeping those feet down nice and flat as much as I can. Let me see if I wanna demonstrate this. The last thing is going to be a calf extension in a lunge position. Now, the modified version of this is just knee down Work it from there. If you guys can, you can use anything you have around to support working that calf extension from a actual lunge position. Big thing here is I'm pushing through the foot evenly. It's not rolling out away from my big toe. Alright guys, it's some time. So Remember, we're looking for full range of motion, feet nice and flat on the ground. You can grab the opposite foot if you want, hips to the knees, full extension from there. Hips to the knees, meaning same uh, level of parallel to the floor. Kind of thing. Full range of motion for a squat base is what we're looking for. So, you guys have four rounds, five each, alternate back and forth, preferably. Ten each or fifteen each, or if you're practicing, we're trying to shorten the range of motion. Maybe I grab a bench, I squat to here, and I come back up. Remember, the goal here is quality. If, as I'm working down into my full range of motion, my foot's rolling, my knee's caving, I'm falling all over the place, I'm not getting any better at the movement. I'm simply doing a crappier movement with a greater range of motion, okay? So the goal is to get into that full depth squat without a ton of rolling rotation, with a nice flat foot, and have the strength to get up out of it. So keep trying to progress lower and lower and lower, but maintain the consistency and quality. All right, so let's talk about the workout. 20 minutes as you went over. Each piece has three different movements, and then there's a rest uh, minute there at the end. So that first one, the squat jump, if you will, isn't technically going to be a full squat, but it can be if you want it to be. This is what it would look like without weight. Um, I've essentially measured something out above my head that's about a foot from my reach, and I'm going to dip down into a deeper position than I normally would on a box jump, but not necessarily a full squat. Jump and try and touch it. Land smooth, jump, and smooth, jump. So there's two things I'm working on here. One is the aggressive extension of takeoff, and the other is the landing and absorption of my force coming back down to the floor. The smoother that gets, the more comfortable I get with it, the more I can turn that energy around and try and send it back into the next jump. If you guys want to add some weight to this, because we don't feel like we're getting much height and we don't get a lot out of it, take two light dumbbells. I'm going to dip, jump, and land. Okay? Principles are the same. Rhythm and timing are the same. The only thing that's going to change on that is going to be that I'm not necessarily going to throw my arms up in the air and try and reach for something. Second movement is going to be that kettlebell goblet squat. Kettlebell or dumbbell if we have one. 
in front of the chest, 15 reps, so 10 on the jump, 15 there. Then I take off for my 200 meter run. If you guys don't have the 200 meter course knocked out, remember you can always modify that by going for time. So for scenario in this situation, we go out for 30 seconds, we come back for 30 seconds. The way back takes longer than going out. We have the same scenario we would for 200, meaning we have that extra minute on the end to get a couple seconds of rest in, or a couple seconds of actual buffer of work, and then still get our rest in before going to that next round. If you guys are modifying, here's what you're looking at, some different cardio piece. 200 meter run equals 250, 200 meter row, guys, girls, equals a 20 cal and 40 cal airdyne, guys, girls, and equals a 400 meter C2 bike. I wonder what I'm looking at. I have the comparison up here on the whiteboard. See you guys tomorrow.